always find there's strange things. Like Jimi Hendrix has been something that sort of appealed to me recently. And uh, I had an interview that I put on tape with James Tabby Wright, who was probably one of the assistant managers under Mike Jeffrey. And on this interview, he talks about how Jimi Hendrix was murdered. Really? Oh, yeah. Because the, you know, the common I, story is that he choked to death on his own vomit, right? And that's what you hear. But here's what you probably haven't heard. No one interviewed the ambulance drivers. No one interviewed the doctor at the hospital who he came in. A lot of the things we were told that happened that day didn't happen. And it was up to Kathy Atchingham, who uh, Jimi Hendrix's first girlfriend in London, who he wrote The Wind Cries Mary for. She was the one who went out and brought up all this new information. Now, to me, which always seemed odd, was that when you read the coroner's report, they talk about Hendrix had like a bottle of wine in his hair. And when they did the toxicology report, the alcohol level in his bloodstream was like two beers. Hmm. But wine was oozing out of his mouth, which means his lungs were filled with wine. So did he asphyxiate? And those nine sleeping pills that he took. Well, according to Tabby Wright, Hendrix was murdered because he was leaving Mike Jeffrey. Mike Jeffrey had borrowed, I think, $2 million or $1 million from the mob to build electrically, Electric Ladyland Studios. And if Hendrix had left him, he would owe a great deal of money and probably not be around much longer. Jimi Hendrix had a $2 million life insurance policy. Wow. Now, when the ambulance got to the flat, the only person there was Jimi Hendrix, who they said was already dead. Monica Daneman, the one who tells the story about fixing Jimi Hendrix a tuna fish sandwich, which Hendrix hated tuna fish and would never eat it, but she said that she'd fixed him the sandwich and that uh, he was fine when she got up to buy a pack of cigarettes. Well... That can't be true. The door was unlocked. It was open. The ambulance comes in. They take him. He's already DOA. They take him to the hospital. And I was told, and like I said, it's on tape, that the sleeping pills stopped the gagging reflex and that three men came up carrying bottles of wine, and essentially Hendrix was waterboarded. Hmm. They held him down and poured bottles of wine down his throat directly into his lungs. Now, if you look at the toxicology report, he had such a small amount of alcohol in his bloodstream, not enough to be oozing from his mouth, implies that he was dead before the alcohol could enter his bloodstream. So you have that story. Also, he told me, that at Electric Ladyland Studios, Mike Jeffrey was there, and that Monica Daneman and he were talking, and he heard Mike Jeffrey say, well done, darling, here's your money. Oof. Now, whatever that means, I know that the night Hendricks died, he had visited his longtime girlfriend, Devin Wilson, who he wrote Dolly Dagger for. He spent some time at her apartment. Monica Daneman drove her car to pick him up blowing the horn, embarrassing him, so he went out and got in the car. Was it a lover's feud? You know? And I know that shortly after Hendrix's funeral in Seattle, Devin Wilson takes a swan dive off the Hotel Chelsea. And then a few years later, Monica Daneman takes a hose, puts it on her muffler in her Mercedes, takes it in through the side window, and asphyxiates herself on carbon monoxide poisoning. So you have a lot of people who had tragic deaths. Mike Jeffrey. All right, Mike Jeffrey was a member of MI6. That's a James Bond group, right? Right. 
and he was a master of explosives, and he used to terrify people. Matter of fact, when Hendrix was going into Toronto, they found heroin in his suitcase, and Hendrix was convinced that Jeffrey had put the heroin there just to show Hendrix that he could get him any time he wanted. A few weeks before Hendrix died, he had been kidnapped, tied up, and put in a garage, and Jeffrey saved him. Or did Jeffrey have him kidnapped and then show him, you know, that he could save him how much trouble he was under? But, you know, when you take a look at all that, Mike Jeffrey was brought back from Spain to do an inquest in England, and on the way back in his plane, the plane blew up, killing everybody on board, and the only thing they found by Mike Jeffrey was a wristwatch. And, I mean, you take a look at all this, it's rather bizarre, isn't it? Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure that you check us out every Saturday night live at 10 p.m. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, too.